So today we're going to go through benchmarking 101. I'm really excited. Uh, we've done a lot of great enhancements for the system uh, since our first edition of the provider analysis. And we just really want to take you through what it's going to be like running through a benchmarking process with our PAG. So one of the first things advisors need to consider is having a game plan. You want to get familiar with your client or prospect. So there are a few things to consider. Are they happy with their current record keeper? Are they experiencing any service pain points? You really want to be able to understand exactly what your client or prospect are looking to improve regarding their 401k plan. Um, are there any service pain points that they're just simply coming across constantly? Are there any service highlights that they're really enjoying that you want to continue to improve on those? How likely is a client or prospect to move to a different record keeper? So this is definitely a question advisors need to ask themselves when it comes to having a game plan. Do I really want to move them to a different record keeper? Are they actually happy with where they're at? And do I just need to run a benchmarking report? Will this analysis primarily be a benchmarking or an RFP? Really important question because that question alone will determine how you're going to approach your client or prospect when it comes to benchmarking the plan. So the more you understand your client or prospect needs, the better you can utilize RPAG's resources when it comes to plan fees, when it comes to RFP Express, when it comes to the provider analysis. You have all three of these weapons, one could say, to be able to tackle your benchmarking goals. So for those of you that don't know, we do have an RFP general consulting form. So to get to this, you'll be able to go to the resource center, then go to RFP and fee benchmarking, go to the client temp internal templates, and there you're going to find our form. This is a great way to be able to host your first initial client meeting with your client or prospect in which you, your team can talk about RFP objectives, you can ask certain questions regarding what their goals as uh, them being a client or prospect are gonna be like. You can then data gather the information regarding your client prospect on their plan. And then towards the bottom of this form, you can see you can write down your client concerns. And again, this is a great resource to be able to have an understanding on what your goals are gonna be with this client or prospect when it comes to benchmarking this plan. So chapter one for our benchmarking 101 is going to be plan fees. And you really wanna ask yourself, what does the current 401k market look like for my current plan, for my prospect plan? So what is plan fees? Well, plan fees is a universe of averages report. So the plan fees prism benchmarking report acts as a prism for retirement plans. So what is a prism? A prism is used to break light up into its primary colors. So in a sense, we take the benchmarking process, we put it through a prism, and we're able to see the light or the total plan cost and then be able to break it up into its primary components, shedding light on areas of concern. So we're going to break down the four main components of a retirement plan's total fees through the plan fees prism benchmarking report. So what are those four primary fee components? We have investment fees. We have record keeping fees, TPA fees, and we have advisory fees. So using the plan fees prison report and the results it gives you will give you a foundation for your game plan for your client or prospect meeting. So with that said, I'm gonna dive into the plan fees system demo to give you an idea on what we can look at through plan fees prison report. So on the RPAG screen, you can see that I'm going to access plan fees through the main menu dropdown. And from here, I can click on the plan fees link and it's going to open a new window for me. Again, running a plan fees report is really going to be uh, step one when it comes to benchmarking your client or your prospect. You want to have an idea on what the current market out there looks like, what record keeping fees look like, what the investment fees look like. 
Um, are these fees within the general range of the general average of uh, the reports of similar size and shape? So again, we want to be able to have the, an idea on what your plan lands regarding this market. So here we'll just give a plan slash client name. So you can see for plan fees, we support all three different types, 401k, 403b, 457b. What we're doing is we take the information from the entire RPAG universe and we compile it here through this prism. You have the ability to add the TPA if necessary. For today's demonstration, I'm just gonna add some general data points regarding my plan. And it's important that you're able to put an idea on what kind of fees you're gonna be dealing with. So again, you can see that it's a pretty simple and easy way of figuring out uh, what fees you're dealing with. Sometimes you might not have all these fees from your prospects. Uh, if you do and you have a hard time translating what the fee disclosure might be, I definitely recommend that you reach out to the support team and we'll be more than happy to break down those fees for you. But once you have those fees ready to go, we can dive into creating our PRISM benchmark. So here we've put the light or the total plan cost through our PRISM and now the system is breaking down what our plan looks like compared to the benchmark universe. So in this case, we're looking at about 315 plans between the range of 1,750,000 to the range of 3,250,000. As I scroll down, I get a really neat layout on how my fees stand against fees of similar size and shape. So for the first example, we have investments. You can see that I'm dealing with a really high investment cost on my current plan. And if I compare it to our low average and high columns, you can see that I have a lot of leverage to be able to go to my client or prospect, let them know that, hey, listen, uh, what I can bring to the table is really take a look at your investment lineup, probably make some changes, add some funds and remove some funds. That way we can bring that expense down. Then if you take a look at record keeping fee, you can see that my record keeping fee is really high. Uh, maybe I have the capability of moving this plan to a different record keeper that could give a better, more competitive record keeping fee for this plan. Perhaps as a prospect, um, I'm able to take this plan into the market run it through RFP Express, run it through the provider analysis and be able to bring that fee down. That way uh, I can kind of show my value behind that. On our TPA, again, the same idea, you get a great idea on what kind of wiggle room you have as an advisor to be able to uh, restructure fees as well as the advisory fees. So you can see my advisory fees are really high up there as well. The very bottom, you can see that we've got the total uh, and kind of the differences between what we're looking at between the current fees of my plan and what the differences are in each average. So definitely great illustrations here for you to use. Uh, you can see that once I download this report, I'll be able to have a great uh, output on what we're looking at with my client or prospect. So you can see here we have the output of the plan fees prism report a great layout on exactly what this information is based off of. And just so you know, for the PRISM average, we take the average of the 40th to the 60th percentile. So we get that, get those numbers together, we put in the calculation, and we give you an average of that. And again, as you can see, pr the PRISM report is a really easy way of going through an analysis when it comes to seeing the benchmarking universe. So again, here on this page, you can see I can explain to my client or prospect that we're looking at about 315 plans in the RPAG prism. Our asset bands are 1.75 million to 3.25 million. And again, the report gives a really great breakdown on what you're dealing with regarding this plan. Now, this gives you a really great base for how you're going to approach the client or prospect on the next step for benchmarking this plan. So. The results will give you a great game plan. Understanding those results will give you the confidence in conducting a benchmarking report. Now we have the decision to make. Do we use RFP Express or do we use the provider analysis? And 
for our membership, the fact that we have options and choices between different benchmarking systems really puts you up top as a premier advisor when it comes to benchmarking plans out there. Uh, benefits of RFP Express, you get instantaneous quotes through the numerous partners we have within the system. You can get a five minute turnaround to a two day turnaround time on any custom reports you might have. We have preset best in class investment lineups ready to go in RFP Express that utilize both the FlexPath fund lineups as well as the CITs. And we have a variety of different solutions in RFP Express ready to download and ready to present to your client or prospect right away. Um, again, I, I kind of like to think of us as like the Costco or the upcoming Costco of benchmarking and analysis. We're going to have a ton of different solutions. We're going to have the PEPs, the exchanges, your traditional 401k uh, proposals. Again, a lot of options in RFP Express. Now, if you're looking to do something more in depth, maybe you're looking to analyze the current investment lineup, you might want to consider using the provider analysis. So here you've got a few different benefits of the provider analysis. It's really highly detailed. You're looking at precise fees, investments, and services through the benchmarking report. We have a 500 plus data point questionnaire on the provider analysis as well, giving you a lot of great insight on each record keeper, what services they can bring to the table, um, what type of managers are we looking at, what's their workload look like, a great, a ton of different uh, data points for you to look at. Included in the provider analysis, we have custom fund to fund mapping comparisons. So once you've ran your benchmarking report on the plan fees prism average report, and you're considering looking at investments, looking at making changes there, maybe the provider analysis is something that you might want to use and have that custom fund to fund mapping comparison. And at the end of the day, with the provider analysis, the providers individually carry the load for you where they're inputting the investment lineups, they're inputting the fees, they get to see the services that they provide while you as the manager get to manage the entire process on hand. This brings us into chapter two, RFP Express. Um, we've kind of taken a look at plan fees prism. We've looked at the data. Looks like we have some wiggle room for the record keeping fees and restructuring that or getting better pricing there. Uh, there looks like we have some wiggle room in the investments and bringing that cost down as well as advisory fees. So here are a few things to consider on RP Express. Uh, preferably, this system is to be used for plans up to 20 million. 20 million seems to be that mark that a lot of our providers and partners are hitting with instant quotes. But hey, if you're above 20 million on the, that plan and you still want to use RP Express, we do have custom quotes that are still available for those plan sizes above 20 million. We now have open architecture quotes available. And so I'm really excited to show you that shortly. And with that said, we're gonna dive into a little system demonstration on RFP Express. I'm gonna show you some of the new features we have here and some tips on utilizing the system there. So I am on the RPAG home screen and I'm really just gonna go to an existing client of mine. Uh, RFP Express is integrated with your existing plans. So if you go to view plan on your current plan, and then you scroll down to RFP Express, we can then click there and you'll see that the system brings all of the current plan information over to RFP Express. Now, the other way to do it would be if you're working with a prospect, you could simply go to the top left menu dropdown and you can click on RFP Express link. That way you can start from scratch on your report. So from here on my current existing plan, I'm just going to click on start new report and you'll see all the data brings bring or comes over and is integrated. And we added this new option. Now, this came from some feedback from our partners and advisors uh, where they might have an administrator that's working on a plan or doing a report for them, but uh, they need the advisor's name there. Perhaps you're working with a broker dealer or you have a home office and you need to add custom additional advisor there on the report. So you can actually type in an advisor's name and then type in their email address. That way it loads right up front to the output of the report. 
So this is a nice feature, kind of gives you a lot of flexibility on doing reports for other people on your team or administrators and home office users that are doing reports for other advisor members of theirs. So here on the screen, we're really gathering extremely basic information, current provider, current administration, the TPA. Um, a lot of this data already pulls in from my RPG plan that I have in there. And then from here, I can go to the next screen. So if you're familiar with the provider analysis, uh, you'll see that we kind of have some questions here that kind of follow that same idea. So how likely will this plan move to a different record keeper? This is going to be a great way for the uh, partners of ours to know exactly what kind of report we're dealing with. Do you want to include advisor compensation in your report? If you click yes, you can then input the existing advisor compensation. And then you can input the compensation that you want to request from the bidders. So from here, you can see the information I've already input has taken me less than two minutes to input. Uh, if I needed to update any of this data, I can go back and hit the edit button on the top left, but I'm ready to go with RFP Express. And you can see instantly that we're going to get instant quotes as well as some options for custom quotes. Now, as we make our way through RFP Express, please note that we're going to have a ton of different solutions coming in and we're really excited for this. So here you'll see we have a ton of different options for you and your team, your client or prospect, really depending on how you want to approach it. So if you're looking at making some adjustments to their investment lineup based on the results of Plan Fees Prism, we do have open architecture quotes available. So you'll notice here, for example, our partner census, they have this quote where you can add the investment expense. So if I hit the compare button first, I can then add the investment expense that I'm looking to aim for. So maybe as an advisor, you have a game plan that you want to aim for an investment expense of about 18 basis points. You can input that fee here as a dollar or as a percentage fee. And then the system is going to recognize that 18 basis points and add it into the total cost of the solution. So when I go to view option details, you can see that I have a record keeping fee here, which pulls from a census instant grid, and then my own investment costs that I've added into the system. So this gives a lot of flexibility when it comes to the ability of obtaining open architecture quotes where you simply don't know exactly what your what your investment cost is going to be, but you can put an estimated cost here. For our other solutions, you can see that we still get a lot of great detail. So your record keeping costs, your investment costs, your advisory fee, you get an idea on what the current Express lineup is going to be. As I mentioned before, we have kicked off our v Express with our FlexPath and our CIT lineups but our, our partners will be offering different lineups as well later down the road. Another great feature we added is custom quotes. So in custom quotes, now you can be very specific with what kind of quote you want from them. So we've got bundled or unbundled. If you select unbundled, you'll notice that a TPA dropdown comes in. So um, from this custom quote, you can then select the platforms that the Record Keeper makes available for you to pick from. You can then select the TPA. Now, if you don't see your preferred TPA you like to use, you're more than welcome to reach out to support at rpag.com. That way we can get them added to this dropdown and make them readily available for you to use in your report. Then you have your investment lineup options. So you're going to have your typical express lineups that we kicked off with. And then you'll notice we have an open arc option in which you're telling the record keeper, hey, listen, I'm looking for a quote in this platform, bundled or unbundled, but I want to keep it open architecture. I want to have that capability of um, getting an investment expense that I want to choose from, having funds available to me across the universe there. Or you can select proprietary fund pricing. So you're essentially telling the record keeper, listen, I'm aiming to offer proprietary fund pricing. So whether it's a proprietary stable value fund or a TDF re-enrollment, those different options, you can then specify to them on the additional instructions. Uh, proprietary stable value at 
dollars in assets. So the more information you give your record keeper when it comes to RFP Express as a custom quote, the better they can quote you at. TDF re-enrollment, and then give them an idea on how many assets are in there. You can even type in uh, how many education days you'd like them to include in the pricing. Again, the more information you give them, the more accurate and the more precise your quote will be for your client or prospect. And then our last feature on the custom quote is going to be an advisor transition fee, also known as a finder's fee. If that's something, if that if you work under that capacity, you're welcome to send them over an idea on what your finder's fee might look like. And then that will be communicated to them on the back end. So from here, you'll make your selections. When it comes to unbundled solutions, you have the capability of adding a TBA cost to that. So I'm just going to select a few unbundled solutions and you can actually see that I, I can add the TBA cost that I probably already obtained into our system here. So you'll notice when I click add TBA, I can then look for my TBA. Now, if it's not in there, please let us know. We'll be more than happy to add that TBA's name on the dropdown. And then we can add the TPA fees here. So again, we have done a great job, which is giving as much detail as possible for our for the report, whether it's an asset charge, whether it's a participant cost or a base fee. You can see that it is really simple and easy to use at the end of the day. Now, I have the option of adding this quote, this TPA fee to all our unbundled quotes I've already selected or I can add it to only the unbundled quotes for Empower in this example. So when I hit add to all unbundled, you can see that it's gonna immediately tack these fees on to the other unbundled quotes I added. Again, all of this depends on how those results came for plaid fees. So really have a good idea on, are, are you gonna be having unbundled quotes in your benchmarking analysis? Or are you gonna be really focused on transitioning them from unbundled to bundled? It, it really depends on your game plan when it comes to those results on plan fees. So you'll see here that uh, for American funds in this example, my TPA was already added in there with my specific TPA name. And now I'm ready to go to the, my next step. And just to kind of give you a sneak peek, we have the ability to add exchanges in here and PEPs. We're really excited about that. I'm gonna go ahead and add this PEP solution so that way we can take a look at the output and what that'll look like. The second I hit request and compare quotes, an email is gonna be instantly sent to all of our record keeper partners. They're gonna get notified that you obtained an instant quote or that, you've, or, or that you're requesting a custom quote. So here you'll see that we've actually integrated plan fees into the RFP Express system. And we're really proud about that. Again, it's really holistic, a natural way of just using all of the resources that RPG has readily available for you. So this gives your client a good idea on what these fees are coming out to on average. This will be your 40th to 60th percentile average that we're looking at. You have the ability to keep your current provider in here as well. If you made any mistakes or you found out that the advisory fee wasn't what it was and you're working with the prospect, you're more than welcome to hit the edit button and make that change right here. Again, we try and keep all of our systems as flexible as possible. That way you have the ability to use it to whatever goal you're trying to accomplish. So you'll notice here that I do have a remove button for you. So if you're taking a look at all these solutions, you've clicked on the express lineup and you decided, you know what, um, this is a lineup that I may not be interested with, with my current client or prospect, you're more than welcome to remove them here. And it actually throws them down here under the remove quotes section. And if for whatever reason you do change your mind, you can just hit restore to view details and it brings them back up to the top for the quote comparison chart. For those open architecture quotes that you have, you are welcome to make changes to them as well. So if you decided, you know what, 18 basis points might not be doable, I'm going to bump it up to 30. That's going to be my new range for getting an investment expense. You're more than welcome to make that update here and it'll save right there on the back end. 
And then using these links, you can, again, take a look at the lineups one more time just to make sure you know exactly what you're going to be offering to your client or prospect with these quotes. With that said, I'm ready to go with generating a report. Go hit here. You have the ability to show the client's logo or not. If you're working on a prospect, you can upload that later and hit generate and download report. So really RFP Express takes minutes to generate. Um, when it comes to an already integrated plan in your RPAG system, that goes straight into RFP Express, input that information and you can get your quotes ready to go and you can present this report in a matter of a couple hours. So with our sample report, you've got your custom advisor name towards the front. You have our benchmarking process laid out, our plan assumptions laid out for you. So a great illustration for your client or prospect to take a look at. You have your service provider summary. So this gives a breakdown on what these quotes are made up of. Do they have TPA fees, any 316 or investment fiduciaries, a PPP if you're dealing with a uh, PEP solution. Then you have your total fee summary giving you a great breakdown. You'll notice we added an investment fiduciary on this page. That way you can see the appropriate breakdown of that fee from the record keeping fee. Then you have your fee details page. So anything in parentheses goes straight to the TPA, allowing you to get a great side-by-side -side comparison of everyone's fees here, broken down by asset charge, base fee, per participant, investment fiduciary, all that. Then you have your service provider comparison. So you might be used to a 500, point, 500 data point questionnaire. We've really condensed that to about 20 here. And then for those investment lineups, and since this was an open architecture lineup, so that means that uh, we're just dealing with a estimated investment expense while the others have a lineup that they wanted to offer you on the express. And then just a provider summary. So again, RFP express, if you're dealing with, if the results on your plan fees has to deal with uh, moving to a different record keeper, but you just want to have an idea on what is currently being offered out there. You can definitely start with RFP Express. It's a great way to continue your benchmarking process. Now, at this point, you're wondering, well, when does the provider analysis step in? So the provider analysis being our premier benchmarking analysis report is going to give you a lot more detail than what we just looked at with RFP Express, you'll be able to do custom fund to fund mapping. Uh, you're going to have a lot more fees that are going to be broken down for your client or prospect to take a look at. Uh, again, it really depends on how detailed you want to go with this client or prospect. Typically, if you already have set in mind that you're going to be changing the investment lineup and you want that side by side comparison, you really do want to use the provider analysis report. And I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks on the provider analysis that I think are uh, commonly overseen and kind of give you the full scope on making sure you're doing things the right way. So one of the first things you want to consider is, do you want to run services and fees only, or do you want to run services, fees, and investments based on your results with plan fees? If you're deciding with your plan or prospect, you know, maybe I'm at a place where I don't want to necessarily focus on investments just yet. I'm just really going to look at what the record keeping fees are coming in. And I want a really detailed breakdown on the services questionnaire. You're welcome to use, we like to call it the B2. We have the B1, the services, we have the B2 services and fees, B3 for those members that have been with us for a, a very long time. Uh, this is what we used to call our benchmarking reports, the B3. Uh, you're welcome to use the services and fees, but if you are going to be leaning towards a very detailed oriented report benchmarking process, you are going to want to use services, fees, and investments. Now, when you are starting a report, the system is going to ask you some initial questions that we're familiar with. So how likely is the plan to move to a different record keeper? 
do you want to include current pricing in the report? Um, this might come to surprise that sometimes the incumbent won't be included in some provider analysis reports that are ran out there, while others will include that. One thing to note on this data point, though, is if you decide to not include them in the current report and you decide to change your mind later down the road, you will find that you're unable to do so. So just be sure that your game plan is set on whether you want the incumbent to be included in that side-by-side -side analysis or if you want your incumbent to be excluded from that. Then we'll ask you about advisor compensation, whether you want to include the current comp or if you want to exclude the compensation. Then you have your services. So this really has to do with your questionnaire. Do you want the full scope of all 21 sections or do you want just nine quick high level overview sections of the provider a questionnaire? If you put your mouse over that little question mark, it'll give you a little bit more detail on what you're gonna be working with. Then you have your fees. So you really wanna make sure, hey, is this the type of client that loves details? Are they you know, doctors, lawyers, engineers? Do they really wanna break down each and every single component? You will probably want to use the full fees. Otherwise, if you're looking for something a little more condensed, just to kind of have like an introduction to fees, uh, you can use the short fees section here as well. If there's a TPA involved, we do have a section for TPA fees, as well as their own service uh, questionnaire that, th that they do fill out. Otherwise, you aren't required to use that and you can select to just look at the admin fee details. And then towards the end, you do have your custom questions. So you do want to make sure you have your questions ready to go when it comes to asking your bidders. So uh, can't can you offer education days? Um, can you support uh, multiple sites? Do you have proprietary fund pricing? What kind of pricing will I get if I include, you know, five hundred thousand dollars in there? So you really want to have those type of details selected and typed out in your custom quotes or in your custom questions. Now, on this page, once you get past those questions, you do have to confirm your plan details. Sometimes you might not have that TPA listed here. This is the last spot that you will want to make sure all of your plan information is accurate. Do you have the right record keeper listed? Do you have the right TPA listed? If you miss any of those details, you will have to start a brand new report. Just make sure that you kind of run through each of these. And then the report kicks off with your incumbent. So you do want to make sure that uh, you do have, I typically tell advisors to send the incumbent information to your relationship manager. They'll be able to help you out in filling all the current plan information. If not, we typically have bidding request, general sales desk emails that you could send it to. You want to make sure you update the due date. If you're working with administrators, you can definitely CC them on these emails. Just kind of, or if you are an administrator and you want to CC the advisor, letting him know that you did send this out, you can do that here. You can attach files as well as type out any additional instructions here on the body. Or you can scroll down and type it in the special instructions. That way, the incumbent knows exactly what they need to provide you, whether it be a 408B2 fee disclosure. Uh, whether it be the fun lineup on an Excel file, whatever the case might be. At the end of the day, sometimes you already have all that information ready to go. You don't need to send it out to the incumbent. You're going to do it yourself. You can, you're can. you more than welcome to click on this edit button here. And this tells the system, hey, I'm the advisor. I'm going to input in this, this information. And this screen is exactly what the record keepers see when they're either the incumbent or when they're bidding. So they'll get an idea on what the plan assumptions look like. They'll see the fund lineup. So even though I'm working on the incumbent here, they'll have the ability to put a side-by-side -side comparison. We'll take a look at that shortly. For you as the advisor, if you're working on the incumbent, here is where you'll make any edits and add any funds that are might be missing from the lineup. Then you have your fees. This is automatically, automatically going to pull in from your plan details page. So if anything needs to be updated here, you would do that here. 
And then the service highlights automatically pulls in. So the neat thing is there isn't any extra work when it comes to the service highlights. Uh, you simply have all of that pre-populated in the back end ready to go. So when it comes to generating the report, you do have some customizable features in there. Uh, you can see that you can actually add in a user document. So you might have a document that allows you to show more information to the client or prospect when it comes to uh, your firm. You're more than welcome to add investment meeting minutes, meeting agendas. Again, we've integrated our PAG to make sure that the provider analysis can give as much information as possible. One thing I do get questioned on is, hey, Christian, listen, I don't wanna use all 500 data points. Can I deselect any of those options? And by clicking on the provider questionnaire, you'll be able to actually come in on the report layout and you can deselect those sections. So this is kind of neat. So if you don't want to use as much paper, you don't want to look at 500 plus data points, you can definitely remove some sections in there and uh, keep it really simple for your client to take a look at. But at the end of the day, it really comes to how detailed you want to be with your benchmarking process. This might be a three-step process. You might do the plan fees uh, report first, and then slowly get into the RFP Express report, and then do a full finalist, uh, finalist meeting with one or two providers running a benchmarking analysis using the provider analysis. Really depends on what you want to do. Just so you know, we do have some benchmarking resources available. So on the resource center, if you go to RFP and fee benchmarking, you go to internal checklists and forms. We have a B3 process checklist that really breaks down what this process I just showed you looks like. Uh, we have a conversion checklist. We have an incumbent data checklist. Again, as RPAG, we want to be able to help you out every step of the way when it comes to the benchmarking process. So feel free to take a look at these internal checklists we got going on here. Then at the end of the day, we have RFP outsourcing. So RPAG can do the heavy lifting for you. So for a stated fee, you can outsource your next RFP and fee benchmarking project for your client or your prospect. And the RFP team will handle that for you. We'll work with the incumbent, we'll gather the bids, we'll finalize the analysis for you to present at the end of the day. If you want to find more information now on the RFP outsourcing process, uh, you can go to the resource center, then go to RFP and fee benchmarking, go to RFP outsourcing, and there you're going to see our outsourcing packet with more information there. Uh, so really, at the end of the day, you have a lot of different options to use. You kick it off with plan fees, prison report. You get an idea on what the advisory fee, the investment fees look like, the record keeping fees. And then from there, you have a really great idea on how you want to approach investments, whether you're going to do a fund to fund comparison, or if you want something instant, simple with world class investment lineups through RFP Express. And then if you want to have a really deep dive into your fees, you probably do want to lean more towards the provider analysis. If you want to have a quick overview on what you could bring to the table, you might want to use RFP Express and kind of show them, hey, listen, here's what I can bring right now. If we want to do a deeper dive, I can do a provider analysis for you later down the road.